Hey guys, it's Dave here. Welcome back to another video. I hope you had a great weekend. If you're new to the channel, I hope you'll consider subscribing by the end of this video if you do find the content interesting. If you're not new to the channel, thanks for continuing to watch. Very much appreciated. And every like and comment always does help with the algorithm. So today, a little bit of a different video for you. I wanted to just share some initial thoughts and really kind of just have as much of a discussion as I can with this medium. I don't have a firm position or uh, decision in mind. I really just want to hear your thoughts about this topic. It's something that's been under more and more scrutiny lately, and not just for Rocket Lab, but the whole space industry, obviously Rocket Lab included though, is uh, the working conditions of employees in the space industry, primarily engineers and things of that nature, but really all sorts I've been hearing anecdotally people saying that, that they have to work extremely long hours. They don't always get paid for the overtime they do. They're supposed to, they're just kind of ex expected to work on weekends or evenings when needed. It's kind of just part of the whole culture of the space industry. And to my mind, this really got started back with SpaceX as like the first big private space company that uh, was solely space focused and the first in the wave of what I would call new space, not thinking about the likes of Boeing and Lockheed and those what I would consider old school space companies. And they really developed a culture of working extremely hard, being extremely focused on the mission. And, uh, you know, work comes first, life comes second philosophy, which as an investor, uh, it can be good because you're getting, I guess, the most you can out of your employees. You're extracting the most value possible. And if we're investors, we're part owners in the company. So from that sense, we, we should want to get the most value out of our the employees possible. But on the other side of things, that does lead to high turnover rates, employees being unhappy. And I personally believe unhappy employees are also less productive and uh, less likely to stay move within the company and uh, you know pass on those skills so uh, definitely a mixed bag and I've just been looking at the Glassdoor reviews of various space companies recently as well as hearing from a few insiders from various companies and just even in the comments section in a recent video someone was asking me what I thought about Rocket Labs Glassdoor reviews looking pretty low in terms of being a great place to work so uh, if that's something that would concern me, and it is a little concerning, so I figured I'd take a bit of a closer look at this and just ask you guys your opinion. If it's something you're worried about or when you're investing in a company, are you checking those Glassdoor reviews? And if you see a company, say, below 3 out of 5 rating as a good place to work, does that make you less likely to invest in the company? Let me know in the comments below. So with that out of the way, let's just take a quick look at some of these Glassdoor reviews for space industry companies and see what kind of trends we can find. So here we are on Glassdoor, if you're not familiar with it. It's a website where insiders can uh, confidentially or anonymously post reviews of what they think about working at the company that they're at, talking about things like the salary, the workplace culture, uh, work hours, all sorts of things, and really just review what what it's like to work at a company. So starting off with Rocket Lab, obviously they're my biggest space company, but I do consider myself to be uh, following the entire space industry at this point. We can see here they're only getting three out of five in terms of a rating for working at the company, which is pretty low. 81% uh, of employees do approve of the CEO, which is pretty good. So I do like to see that. And of course, I am a big fan of Peter Beck myself. But I, I would like to see this number higher as an investor, just in terms of retaining talent, making sure employees are happy, I think is good. But on the other side of things, you don't want it to be massively easy and employees are just relaxing and slacking off either. Obviously, you want it to be a productive work environment as well and not over hiring either. So that is uh, the balance we're looking to strike here. And I'm just trying to uh, formulate my own thoughts as we go through this video. I don't have a firm opinion on what should be done here or whether this affects the overall thesis of investing in Rocket Lab, as I am a big investor, you probably know. We can see looking at what the reviewers are saying in terms of the biggest cons. We have very long work hours, 
to keep up with the workload. It's a lot of hours, but you can't have the kind of success Rocket Lab has had without it. So at least this person uh, acknowledging that it's a lot of work still seems to be happy with the company and working there. Uh, some people feel the LA location is a little bit too managed by head office in New Zealand. No overtime pay, some people are saying, for the amount of overtime they're working, which I, I can lead to employees leaving or being disgruntled. Now, I do want to acknowledge on this site, I think there's a bit of an inherent uh, tilt because people who are angry with their company are more likely to go on and post negative reviews, whereas someone who's just happily working away at their company may not even bother to think about going on a review site like this and post a good review just because, you know, they have a fulfilling job, they don't really worry about it. But if someone is disgruntled and angry or has a vendetta against their company or their former company, if they're let go, they're much more likely to go on a site like this and try to trash their company and uh, get, you know, payback or revenge any way they can. So I do think there's a bit of an inherent skew to some of the numbers when you're looking at a review site like this. But I do still think we have to compare Rocket Lab to some of these other players. And if they're falling behind there, then maybe that is something for concern. So uh, you can go through yourself if you want read various reviews. There's definitely tons. Some people like it. They say interesting but demanding. Once again, that's a very common theme, uh, demanding basically everywhere. Uh, then let's check SpaceX. They actually have a 4.0 out of 5. So SpaceX surprisingly has a higher rating than Rocket Lab. To be honest, I really didn't expect that from uh, going into this research, I really thought, you know, Elon's a very controversial figure. SpaceX is notorious for having extremely grueling working hours, uh, taking in young engineers, working really hard, having to move to a remote location in Texas to work on their Starship program, all these things I thought would really hit them. But overall, uh, they actually have some pretty good reviews. So, you know, fast paced, good work environment for opportunities. Uh, very challenging and rewarding. They also do have long work hours, but worth it if you're all in on the mission. Work-life balance can become difficult. Long hours, no work-life balance. Uh, just kind of the common theme here we're seeing with SpaceX as well as Rocket Lab. Although SpaceX does have higher percentage approving the CEO and higher overall reviewing as well. Virgin Galactic, uh, even lower than Rocket Lab there. So that's, I guess, another point against them, although I haven't been a fan of this company for quite a while. So they're at a 2.6 out of 10 with only 38% approving of the CEO. I think if only 38% of your internal employees going on this site uh, approve of the CEO, something's probably wrong there. There are some good reviews, of course, some people saying that the work schedule allows for much needed downtime. So again, I guess that's good for employees. But if you were an owner or investor looking at this, seeing how um, internal people are saying it's great for downtime, would that concern you? Maybe that's going too far the other way. And then, of course, some other complaints, upper management is out of touch. And uh, we also have a work-life balance non-existing. So clearly it depends on the job you're in, what kind of balancing you get there. But uh, quite poor reviews for Virgin Galactic overall. ULA, obviously more of a traditional space company, one of the old school operators, jointly owned, of course, by Boeing and Lockheed. We have 69% approval of their CEO, so that's also lower than Rocket Labs back as well as Elon. And uh, 3.6% out of five. So that's actually pretty solid, really. Uh, higher than Rocket Lab, not quite as high as SpaceX. So they say it has great work-life balance, which is um, obviously good for employees, perhaps not as good for the productivity on the ownership side of things. Uh, and then pay benefits, work-life balance are great. Uh, excellent pay and benefits. That's another thing. So obviously you want to pay competitively to or, to retain the best talent, but you also don't want to see your company is excessively overpaying for employees either. So it's definitely a, a balancing act when you're looking at these things. Uh, one negative for ULA is that they ha were apparently planning significant reductions in the workforce, whereas a rocket lab or someone of that nature is continuing to expand. Blue Origin, one of the other new space companies, these guys private and much more secretive. Uh, they're 
isn't really a lot of information coming out of their closed doors. So definitely interested to say what employees are saying on a, you know, confidential forum like this. Only 41% approve of their CEO, which is quite low. Uh, they do say they have incredible work-life balance and great people committed to an important mission, but upper management does not listen to employees. So, you know, that's something else you could be concerned about. Obviously, we can't invest in Blue Origin as they're a private company, but it's just interesting to see the comparison there. Another launcher here, Firefly Aerospace 4.0. So it sounds like they're a pretty good place to work and uh, astoundingly 100% approve of the CEO. So good job to Bill Weber. Only five ratings, so a small sample size, but having a 100% of approval rating, not bad at all. Although, having said that, we do have a review right here saying no opinion of CEO, I wouldn't recommend, uh, saying he thinks that there is stupid choices from management and they don't listen to the people that know what's going on. ABL, one last company that we're looking at here, a new, another new launcher in the startup space. They have 70% approval of CEO, 3.7 out of 5, and 68% recommended to a friend. Another thing I've heard about working for Rocket Lab is that they don't really allow work from home, which uh, I think in this day and age, it's probably okay to allow working from home at least one day a week. Let me know how you guys feel about working from home in the comments below. I do feel like five days a week working from home can have an impact on your culture. Uh, it just doesn't feel as great just staying home all the time, not getting out of the house. I think you do get less productive, just almost like as a natural consequence of it. There is something good about going into the office, but I think allowing the flexibility to work maybe one or two days from home is understandable if your job allows it. Obviously, if you're in a factory manufacturing rocket components, there's no way you can work from home there. But if you're an engineer, maybe doing designs in uh, you know an application or something like that, doing calculations uh, maybe one or two days working from home wouldn't be the worst thing in the world we also know Elon is very much against this he doesn't allow SpaceX or Tesla employees work from home so I think overall I wouldn't mind seeing a one or two days from home also uh, perhaps a little bit more OT pay could be good for the company so that's it for the Glassdoor site unfortunately I tried to go back in time using Wayback Machine and see what an older version of the page would show whether there's a trend of Rocket Labs internal reviews going downward which would be even more concerning to me but unfortunately we are unable to see any older versions of this page in Wayback Machine. So let me know uh, if you've checked this previously and if you've noticed a downtrend on their reviews because I think that would be concerning. And are you as an investor or potential investor concerned by any of these companies having a low rating or just the space industry in general? Maybe uh, we need the culture of the whole industry to kind of change here and allow more work-life balance uh, as the industry matures and we get away from the frantic startup just trying to make sure we don't go out of business into really coming into the big leagues in the future. So this is definitely something I'll keep an eye on going forward. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I'm planning to do a live stream of Rocket Lab's Q1 earnings when they come out. So look out for that and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great week. Bye for now. Thank you.